So continuing on with the issue or the question of taxes and taxation in Australia, obviously the entire structure of the ATO, the Australian Taxation Office, has raised a lot of questions in your mind. Can you tell me what would be your opinion on what taxes are used for or why they're raised in the first place? Well, every government, good or legitimate or whatever in history, has imposed taxations. Now, if you go back to the Bible where Jesus was um, showing the coin and it was a question of tax, and he said, he held the coin, he looked at it, he said, who owns this coin? They said, it's Caesar's. Well, if it's Caesar's, give it to him. That's what he said. Um, however, today our government is not Caesar, and the notes that they print are not theirs. You've got to remember that only 5% of the, what is called money in our society is actual notes and coins. All the rest is debits and credits, which used to be marks on a book. Today they're electronic blips. Yes. So you go to the bank and you borrow 300,000 electronic blips, and then you're told you've got to bring back... Real money? Um, well, what is real money? Yeah. Yes, of course, that's the, a good question. The real money is God's money, says so use gold and silver. But um, the fact is, money is only a system of debits and credits. Individuals, all human interaction must be by consent or contract or agreement. For example, I ask you to mow my lawn, I offer you $50, you can say, no, that's not enough, I want more, or whatever the amount that we agree on, and I give you a piece of paper which says $50 on it and you accept it even though it's counterfeit. But you accept that. That is payment for labour. It is not income. Um, and as such it shouldn't attract taxation. Well, taxation is saying, look, you do all the work and I want 10% of it, 20% of it, 30% of it by somebody who's outside who's not contributed anything to what you produced. A third party. A third party. Now, um, as I understand it today, I can't prove it, but it appears to me that all the taxation which is collected, like I mentioned 45 billion, some figure like that, that's collected for fuel tax. How about driver licence tax, um, registration tax, and I know semi-trailer drivers who are paying 40, 50,000 a year before they can even start the engine in their truck to try and make a living. Um, road tolls are totally illegal. Who owns the roads? The people? Or does some organisation calling it itself a government or a, a council or something own the land? Who owns it? I thought the roads were the... And who paid for the, the bitumen and the, whatever the highways? Yes, they were built by human effort and paid for a long time ago. It's like you go and want to have a house in the suburbs. The developer pays for the pipes and the sewage and the water and all that. And then you come along and you move in and you've got to pay again and again and again. Now, I was a draftsman for many years in Brisbane and I used to design subdivisions, etc. And the amount of... Um, interference that councils do with those is just atrocious. Yes. Thousands and thousands of dollars for fee. I saw one instance a man wanted to put up a carport, just four, four legs and a top roof. No, no sides, no doors, no front. A modification to his own home? No, he just wanted to put in. He put it in his own concrete slab. He happy with the neighbours. Um, didn't bother any neighbours. And the shed the metal and that cost him $1,800. The council inspection fee was $3,000. What did they do? Come out and have a look at it. The engineers who make those big sheds and that, they're not fools. They don't want their sheds falling over. They've got better engineers than the uh, wannabe power maniacs who come straight out of university and get a job with a degree and they can't even drive a nail and a bit of wood, most of them. But where does that tax go? Well, I'm led to believe that um, it goes into somebody's pocket. 
there's no such there's, there's no such thing as the council or the government. That's just a piece of paper. So the it's, money won't necessarily money paid by the public in taxes is not necessarily going to not, flow back to the public. No, not at all, and only in the form of wages. Like most councils, the vast amount of money they collect is in inflated, ridiculous salaries, and um, like pensioners. Going the history of pensions is we are supposed to be getting the seven percent we pay all our life. We're supposed to go in a pension fund. Today we should be getting pensioners should be getting about nine hundred dollars per week. Today they're getting half of that thereabouts, and the council comes along and says, "I want two months of your income because I've got a truck which we pay the rubbish man fifty cents a bin to pick it up." Uh, it's God's water, yes, most people would be quite happy to contribute to maintenance of these things, but that doesn't happen very often. But uh, it seems to me that governments, why should a government have to borrow? Because um, they spent too much, no. The tax end up, from what I can understand, is in the Bank of England and the Vatican, who own the banks, who then Governments go cap in hand, can we please borrow some money because we've got to run the country, we want to build a road or something like that under the faulty money system. Yeah, sure, how much do you want? 50 billion or something like that. Now, what's your um, security or your, you know, when you go for a loan, what do you call it? You've got to have your assurance of ability to repay. Ability to repay, yeah, yes. Well, next year's taxes. Oh, okay. You better put taxes up a bit more, or find another sneaky way to put some more taxes on people. So obviously, any money that is paid in the form of taxation in Australia, if it's going to the Bank of England or the Vatican, plainly and clearly, the money's flowing out of Australia. Absolutely, yeah. Well, remember when you had your first child or your second or whatever? Everybody was very in. What does a baby weigh? How many ounces? How many grams? How many kilograms? Why? Why that serious attention? Well, it goes back to 1933 when the Bank of England declared the world bankrupt because it was the one issuing all the credits to the colonies and even in America and stuff like that. And so people couldn't pay it back. So they said, well, we don't want your check. We want gold. So. You've heard the expression, you're worth your weight in gold? Absolutely. So the baby's weight is that's how much gold goes out of Australia to the Bank of England for every new baby. And that is, is that why the, the baby's uh, weight at birth is, very is so meticulously recorded. Yes, yes, yes. Cause that's Because remember that baby is regarded as a slave who's going to produce all his life. A collateral? Yeah. See, the only wealth on earth is human effort. Human effort is the only wealth. Is that what you would refer to as, for example, sweat equity? Yeah, you could call it that. I'll use a little parable again. Um, two people, two men, ended up being shipwrecked on a little island. The only thing on the island is coconuts and fish. So they sit down and have a talk about this. One is young and strong. Okay, you climb the trees and get the coconut. The other man says, oh, I'll do the fishing. And we agree, one fish equals one coconut. Uh, we, never mind about all, that's all we've got, okay. So obviously sometimes there'll be more coconuts and there'll be less, and so we have a little bartering arrangement, or it's a contract. We agree to share according to what we produce. So how are we going to record this? Well, we haven't got any paperwork or anything, or we'll just make, make a scratch on a tree. This means you owe me, and that means you owe me. That is the money system. That is our money system. It's recording human effort. That's all money is. Money, um, God says you can use gold and silver as a system rather than scratches on trees, but you cannot charge interest. Interest is something which is dreamed up, and that is what gives the world elite, if you want to, they're not elite or they're not honorary, you know. You ever seen politician honorable? 
I, won't, I never write that word, they're not honourable, um, who enforce illegal laws, illegal, there's a big difference between illegal and unlawful. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Big difference. And so that's where the money system, that is the root cause of, you know, money is not the root of all evil, it's the love of money. That's correct, it's often misquoted. Yes, and you hear somebody's, you know, made a billion dollars, well if he's made it fairly and squarely and honestly, I don't begrudge Elvis Presley making 70 million dollars last year. Did he force, trick, con anybody to buy his records or go to his concerts? Now, whether you like his music or not, you were never forced to buy one of them. And there's enough people who said they like it, so that's why he got rich, nothing wrong with that. Now, why should he pay huge amounts to people who don't sing, don't work, don't produce, had nothing to do with the production of what he did? I'm not using that as, a, but that is a pretty much example. But what amazes me is how come a man who's got, you know, billions of dollars, why do they want more? They can't. How many cars can you drive at once? Thank you.